Portland be the 18th team in Major League Soccer. This is the City of Portland's championship. It is great to be home. Sports Sunday with Orlando Sanchez. Sponsored by 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Shh. What's good, everyone? Welcome to Sports Sunday. Be very, very quiet. It's been a long, long weekend. Okay, come with me. Art, I need you to wake up. What? Are you okay? What? Wake up. Guess what? It's the Pac-12 after dark. Oh. It strikes again. <laughs> oh. Don't feel bad if you were sleeping. It's All okay. Right. All right. They were asleep too. Oh yeah. Literally, yeah. at the game, struggling to stay awake. Don't worry though. <laughs> okay. The legendary Mike Parker <laughs> ringing the alarm for Beaver Nation. <laughs> Ready to go, 25 seconds to play in the game, down five. Ben takes the shotgun snap. Bill Branson throws down the right sideline. And over the shoulder, catch by Harrison. 20, 15, 10, five, touchdown, Beavers! Treshawn Harrison, the catch, 13 seconds to play. The Beavers take the lead. It's a miracle. That's how the ESPN broadcast summed it up. You good, Art? You awake for this? I'm awake now. Woo! Trey Sean Harrison's catch, incredible. An improbable 56-yard game-winning touchdown with 13 seconds left. The Beavers were down 14 at Stanford heading into the fourth quarter, playing with backup QB Ben Goldbrinson. The Beavers outscored Stanford 18-3 in the fourth, capped off by a one-minute drill for the ages, where OSU covered 76 yards in 45 seconds, leading the Beavers to a 28-27 victory. Harrison and Goldbrinson on the comeback. I was thinking touchdown, guys, score, got to make a play for the team. Um, yeah, that's all I was thinking of. When I seen nobody in front of me, straight green grass, I was thinking touchdown all the way. We keep fighting until the last second and show it out there, and you know, it takes back to the Fresno State game. We keep fighting to the last second, so I think, you know, with this team, anything is possible. <laughs> Man, the Oregon's, Oregonian said it might have saved their season. Instead of oh, yeah. a three-game losing streak, the Beavers are now 4-2. and two. So, Art, do you agree? Did this win save the season? I believe it did. Uh, you know, when we were watching it, I thought, oh, this is horrible. They're going to, you know, they're going to lose three in a row. This saved the season. What can a win like this do <laughs> for the Beavers? Well, hopefully give them a whole lot of momentum. I mean, mm -hmm. I think they already believed in themselves. They already knew that they had this kind of stuff in them. But man, now I think they really kind of believe in themselves. Yeah, I mean, you saw it against Fresno State. Yes. And then to do it again, like you're basically adding up these experiences and hope that it will help them in other big time games. Absolutely. You know, the other the only other thing is, yeah. don't be in that position. Right. <laughs> no. go, go ahead and take care of business early. Get this done. Get it taken care of. Then you don't have to have us all have heart attacks while watching <laughs> right. the game. Man. That's if we're awake in the first well, place. Because these 8 right. o'clock kickoffs are just brutal. What would it have been, like 2.36 a.m. on the East Coast if you had tried to stay up to watch that game? Right. Crazy. Majority of the people aren't watching that nope. game on the East nope. Coast. But good for the Beavers. They That's come right. out and they get a win on the road. We know tough, tough <laughs> to win on the road in this yes, conference. And now they get Washington State next. Oh, that won't be easy. No. They better bring their A game because if they played the way they did against Stanford, they're not they're in trouble. Get it done. Yeah. All right, Art. The desert hasn't been kind to the <laughs> Oregon Ducks in recent years. Doesn't matter how good they are, those trips, they've been rough. 2011, the last time Oregon won at Arizona. History would not repeat itself. The 12th ranked Ducks were having none of that against the Wildcats. After <laughs> punting on the first possession, Oregon scored touchdowns on seven consecutive drives. Whew. All of them were rushing TDs, the most since 2017. And quarterback Bo Nix, he had three of them. Nix could not be stopped. I mean, he also was 20 of 25 passing for 265 yards. The Oregon offense reeled off 580 while holding Arizona's explosive passing attack in check. 
This was a certified blowout. The Ducks crush Arizona 49-22. Oregon improves to 5-1 on the season, riding a five-game win streak into the bye week. Next up, they'll host undefeated UCLA. Now, Art, it hasn't been an easy place to win for the Ducks. No. But they made it look easy. So. What are you going to take away from this win? Well, just the fact that they are making things look a lot easier than they have in the past. You know, we know that they want to run first, so we get that. But, man, they really are making it look like uh, no big deal. You know what? We're better than these teams, and we're going to show it. I know Georgia is its own beast. Sure. But what have you thought about the play of Bo Nix in the last five games during this winning streak? Yeah, I thought it's been – I think it's been pretty amazing. I mean, I think it's it's – better than I thought his freshman year was his best year mm -hmm. and I think this has been way better than that he's really coming into his own oh, yeah. with the Ducks and shout out to that offensive line because yeah. they are a well-oiled machine just like we yep. thought they would be that's right thought they would be their strength yep. right yep Alex Forsyth and the crew get yeah it done they totally are and they're oh, protecting yeah. him he's not taking that no, many hits either no, he's not so Art that sets up the battle <laughs> with UCLA in two weeks the Bruins sure look like the real deal. They ran all over Utah in a 42-32 win, arguably Chip Kelly's biggest win at UCLA. The Bruins are ranked number 11. Mm. They're 6-0, their best start since 2005. So, Art, what are you looking forward to with this marquee matchup <laughs> against Oregon? I'm really looking to see if the if the Oregon defense can hold up mm. because, uh, you know, UCLA, well, they, you know, they they ran the ball great against Utah. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, was it DTR? Is, yeah. You know, yeah. He's really, you know, he's putting up some really good numbers. A true dual threat guy. So, uh, I'll be interested to see if they can handle all of that and, and keep that offense in check. This is two teams with similar identities in terms yeah. of what they want to do, and that's pound the rock. That's right. And sets up for a great game. And let's see oh, if Coach yeah. Kelly Graves, women's basketball coach, can get this push to get college game day in Eugene, in Eugene. for this game. Would be awesome. Maybe Sabrina oh, yeah. Ionescu could be a guest host there. I'd like it. That would be awesome. Yeah. Okay, Art. USC, they keep rolling along. Trojans took care of business against Washington State. Caleb Williams threw a couple of touchdown passes. Travis Dye rushed for one. USC wins 30-14. to 14. Man, did you see this one? The University oh. of Washington dropped its second game in a row. The Huskies fell to Arizona State in a wild one in Tempe. Sun Devils managed to pull out a 45-38 win. Washington now out of the top Ouch. 25. Just like you saw coming, right? Two weeks yeah, ago. Right. I thought they were the real deal. Me too. We thought Washington was the team was, to be. Yep. What a difference a couple of weeks made. Oh, yeah. All right, man. We still got more Sports Sunday ahead. The Seahawks had a rough trip to New Orleans. And not because they spent too much time on <laughs> Bourbon Street, but there are positives to take away from a loss to the Saints. Later. The sure leg of Henry Nelson Ooh. gave the Nelson Hawks their first win against Barlow in the final seconds. But that wasn't even the best play by a kicker this week. Wow. I told you. We'll see you on the other side. Welcome back. It is fair to say that this has been one of the most difficult weeks in the history of the Portland Timbers and the Portland Thorns. On Monday, the Yates report was released. In part, it detailed sexual misconduct and emotional abuse by former Thorns coach Paul Riley, along with how Timbers and Thorns management mishandled the entire situation. General Manager Gavin Wilkinson and Business President Mike Golub were fired. Owner Merritt Paulson is stepping away from the team with fans calling for him to sell the teams. Now, one of the biggest sponsors made an announcement today. Alaska Airlines will redirect its sponsorship funds for the next few months from the teams to the NWSL Players Association and its quote, support the Players Emergency Trust. Money will also go to youth sports leagues in Portland. Alaska is not abandoning the Timbers and Thorns, but this is a big money statement in the support of the players. And this is not over. Yeah. There's still a joint investigation involving the league and the players union. All right, well, there was some work to be done on the field for the Portland Timbers today because today was decision Sunday in the MLS. For the Timbers, that meant win or draw against Real Salt Lake to get into the playoffs. For Portland, this game was a disaster. Mm. Real Salt Lake took a lead 1-0 in the 19th minute on a ball that just curled inside the right post to get that goal. The Timbers, they seemed out of sync the whole way. In the 48th minute, RSL added to the lead. Ball deflected off Bill Tuoloma and right into the back of the net. It was 2-0 RSL, and the Timbers' season was slowly going down the drain. 
Portland finally got on the board in the 87th minute of the match. Dyron Espria, he scored his 10th goal of the season. That's a bright spot for the Timbers. Portland's season comes to an end with a 3-1 loss. First time since 2016 that they have been out of the postseason. First time that Gio Savarese has missed the playoffs as the head coach of the team. He even apologized to the fan base. He did. Right after the game. Well, today's result was a disappointment. It was a special week for one Timbers player. On Thursday, midfielder George Fochive hosted his first art gala in Southeast Portland, a longtime passion of his on full display. Fochive was born in Washington, D.C., but has lived all over the world, like France, Denmark, and Israel. Hmm. His family is from Cameroon. All those experiences have come to life in his artwork, an outlet away from the pitch. In these pieces I've been working on all year, but really it's something I've been working on my entire life. I was injured in and out this season and, uh, and that wasn't easy mentally. And this was a great escape, great therapy, and, and, uh, and I'm so proud of it. Pretty cool to get to hear player <laughs> stories outside of the yeah, game. Yeah. More Sports Sunday still to come. We'll take you around the NFL. One team is left unbeaten, mm. how the Eagles did in the desert. Is 0-2. To. Tapia to center field. Rodriguez there makes the catch. And one of the great comebacks in playoff history sends the Mariners to the division series. Wow, the Seattle Mariners with that biggest comeback by a visitor in playoff history to beat the Toronto Blue Jays in the wild card series. Seattle was down by seven runs, but managed to come back to win at 10 to nine. So they advanced to the divisional series. They get to play Houston next. That series <laughs> starts on Tuesday. <laughs> Soak it up, Mariners fans. Oh, yeah. All right, Art. The roller coaster ride known as the Seattle Seahawks <laughs> continue today in New Orleans. Seattle taking on the Saints. Geno Smith again with a good game. Fourth quarter. This is an absolute dime to Tyler Lockett. 40 yard score. That pulled the Seahawks to within six. Smith with three touchdown passes on the day. Now check this out. Rookie running back Kenny Walker the third. Oh, yeah. flipping the switch. 78 yard touchdown run, his first career TD. With the extra point, Seattle took a one point lead. But that didn't last long. Mm -hmm. Next possession. Taysom Hill, the NFL version of Jack Coletto in the Wildcat, 60 yards for the TD. Ran for three scores, threw for another. Saints hold on to beat the Seahawks 39-32. Seattle falls to two and three. So Art, is this team what you thought it would be? Actually, you know what? I think this team is better than I thought it would be. Uh, you know, the, the record is probably about right, but I wasn't sure that they were gonna beat anyone. Geno Smith <laughs> looks like the man. What is your yeah. idea in terms of long-term solution? Could, yeah. could he be the guy? Well, I think for the next few years, two, three years maybe, I wouldn't spend uh, like a top 10 draft choice on a quarterback now. I'd wait a little bit longer in order to pick one because he's playing good ball. That's huge because at the beginning of the year, we were all thinking, uh oh, this, uh -oh, is, this, is, this is not be bad. a good idea. Yeah. Now yeah. we're talking quarterback yep. for the future. Yep, looks better than Russell Wilson. Yikes. Mm -hmm. All right, you know what time it is, man. Let's take our trip around the NFL. Surprising comebacks, wild finishes win the day. So nice in London last week, we'll run it back. The Giants and Packers at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. This was the surprising comeback. Giants were down 17-3 in the second quarter, and then they came to life. New York outscored Green Bay 20 to nothing in the second half. Giants win 27-22, they're four and one. Best start since 2009. And Aaron Rodgers is mad. Uh-oh. <laughs> hey, let's take the long trip to First Energy Stadium in Cleveland for the Browns hosting the Chargers. This one had the wild finish. Oh. The Browns had a chance to take the lead late in the game, late in the fourth Brissett. quarter. Jacoby Brissett, he throws Dodge to a guy in the wrong jersey uh -oh. in the end zone. So you know what? It looked like the Chargers had the game won, but they failed on a fourth and two. What do you think of those analytics? Oh. And Cleveland got one more chance. Cade York, he missed a 54-yard field goal with 11 seconds left in the ball game. Chargers hang on for the 30 to 28 win. All right, Art, let's move on. State Farm Stadium, Suburbia Phoenix. Unbeaten Eagles visiting the Cardinals. Jalen Hurts, another solid day for Philly. Ran for a couple of TDs. The Eagles built a 14-0 lead, then Arizona snapped. 
The Cards pulled to within three points, had a chance to send this game to overtime. Matt Amendola missed a 43-yard field goal, and the Eagles win. 20 to 17. They're 5 and 0, oh, only unbeaten team left in the league. Wow, didn't see that coming. Nope. And finally, let's travel south to Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. The Panthers hosting the 49ers. Mark's 49ers. Oh yeah, the Niners they dominated this one. Jimmy Garoppolo wasn't flashy, but he threw two touchdown passes and he didn't make any mistakes. The 49er defense stingy. San Francisco scored on a pick six, kept Baker Mayfield in check. 49ers win at 37-15. They are in first place in the NFC West. How about our 49ers? Yeah. For our Friday Night Football Play of the Week, we got to show some love to the kickers. Marco <laughs> Torres, you are up. That is a high school kicker nailing a 51-yard field goal. Ooh. Yes, I repeat. 51 yards. Sandy beats Clackamas 23-14. If you missed anything from Friday night, just head to YouTube. The KGW channel has our full show, plus extended highlights from each game. Week seven, here we come. We got some good options for you on the game of the week. Top 10 matchup in the Northwest Oregon Conference. Wilsonville visits Southridge. Big game in the mid Willamette Conference. South Albany looks to slay the Dallas Dragons. Mm. Scapoose visits St. Helens for the 100th edition of the Seven Mile War. And up in Vancouver, ninth ranked Skyview. Can they finally topple the giant that is the Camus Papermakers? Head to KGW.com slash GOW to vote for your game of the week. Poll closes on Wednesday. Let's ball for a minute. Portland Trailblazers back on the court for preseason play in Sacramento against the Kings. Big news this weekend is that Josh Hart earned the starting small forward spot for the season. Hart came to the Blazers in a trade last season with New Orleans. The Blazers fell to the Kings tonight, 126-94. Portland has one more preseason game Tuesday at Golden State. We'll be right back. As you know, we're going to go to uh, to burn uh, tomorrow night, so we're going to be taking you with us. So hope that makes your day. <laughs> it's always scary when I get called in here. I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, I just love moments like that. Yes. How special! That's the moment when former Winterhawk. Cody Glass found out he made the Nashville Predators. He traveled to Europe with the team and has an assist in two games. So he's already taking advantage of the opportunity presented to him. Making now, his mark. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now his former teammates with the Portland Winterhawks, they're now 5-0 and to yeah. open the season. They haven't done that in a very, very long, long time. time. Man, How cool is that see, moment? That's great. Oh, man, that's just, that's fantastic. I think he thought he was going in there to be told he was cut. Yeah, <laughs> like he was in trouble. You're, you're going back to the AHL. Oh, <laughs> you know? man. Oh. Talk about a roller coaster Ooh. of emotions, but that yeah. shows you the years and years of hard work and dedication yes. that it takes to get to, to get that there. moment. Oh, yeah. I can see why the tears are starting to flow yes, there. Absolutely. That's how we end the show here tonight. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much for rocking with us here on Sports Sunday. Have a great week, y'all. Good night, everyone.